guardian of Gaia was a tough opponent. Tougher than the wither. I had prepared well and had won the battle, claimed the prize. Spirit shards of the goddess Gaia quickly crafted into powerful and magical artifacts. A crown and a sash. With these artifacts I would travel with incredible speed over almost any terrain. My knowledge of the druid's magic near complete. I set out to explore new dimensions using the power of the artifacts to quickly gather pages of knowledge from other worlds. I was searching to unlock a way into the elemental planes themselves. Now then, welcome back to another episode on the Utopia Cubed server. Uh, I am a giant, it seems. Check it out. I am as tall as my castle, and I have grown in stature as well as grown in power, and my ego has grown a fair bit as well. Now I have defeated the Guardian of Gaia. I am a giant among men. I am a Grand Druid. Alright, maybe not. Maybe this is just me flying around because I have the Fugal Tiara. Yes. Thank you to the crystals that I got. I can now fly around. Check it out. I leave a little sparkly trail. Of course I do. Vasky made this mod. So of course I leave a little sparkly, sparkly trail. I saw in the comments that I'm surprised that the Guardian was not a pink wither. And I'm surprised these little sparkles are not pink sparkles or rainbow sparkles or something. Uh, but it's pretty cool that they've got little sparkles on. It means that other people will know that you are flying using the Batania magics. It's pretty cool. I like it. It's uh, virtually a creative flying mode, really. Uh, yeah, virtually a creative flying mode. Uh, I'm flying around and I'm using space to go up and shift to go down. But when you're going forwards and down, you don't go down quite the same as creative mode. It's cool though. It's very cool. It's very cool to be able to spin around and do all this sort of stuff by flying around. Uh, it reminds me of having the jetpacks from Modded Minecraft. It's that kind of technologically advanced level. Vasky has said many times that this is a na nature magic with a tech mod feel. Well, here we are with a tech techie backpack, all made from killing a boss and crafting a few ingots using the power of mana. I've still got a fair bit of work to do on the uh, Batania area, the beacons, and I've got another couple of boss fights I need to make, I think. I think I need to make another couple of boss fights happen. Uh, but for now, I've decided that I want to make uh, my own dimension in Miscraft. And from what I've gathered so far, book-wise, or page-wise, I've got a few pages that I quite like the look of, but I haven't got nearly enough to make my ideal di dimension. So this episode, uh, I'm just going to get a few bits and pieces ready, but this episode we are going exploring Miscraft Dimensions. So first things first, we're going to take water bottles. We're going to take ink, which of course I keep in my bedside cabinet. Of course I do. And we're going to make ink. Two ink sacks and a water bottle makes a vial, ink vial. Now that's the official recipe. I want to just test something from my Batania lot. Uh, just to see if... Uh, that makes two, doesn't it? Let's see if the Batania black dye... Uh, let's make it into petals first. I did that last time wrong. If the black dye will make the ink as well. Where did that unlinked book come from? I don't remember picking that up. Oh well. Uh, yeah. That and that and that. Yes it does. So that's awesome. I don't need an ink farm after all. I just need a Britannia flower farm which I've got. So that's pretty cool. Okay. So put them away. Uh, un unlinked link book. I'll keep the hold of that anyway. I can't see where I got it off what shelf, but never mind. Uh, right, and then the next stage in the basics is making this inkwell, uh, an ink mixer. These are the things you need. There's not much really to know about miscrafting crafting-wise, but an ink mixer, some stone, a couple of bits of wood, and a glass bottle makes the ink mixer. 
And this is like the first thing you need. So you put vials of ink in the top there and it fills this. And the glass bottle comes out the other side. You put paper in here and paper and ink makes these linking panels. So next up, we need to make a book to another world, another realm, another dimension. And that's made using this uh, book binder the other way. Now book binder, let me just show you uh, book binder, book binder, a few bits of iron and a few bits of um, planks. Easy to make a book binder, okay? And that would make a random miscraft age, a random descriptive book. And I've already made one over here, but I didn't like it, so I'm not doing that for this episode. It was a bit naff, really. Um, you've got these writing desks as well, though. And a writing desk, let me show you this. Writing desk, uh, it's not showing me that. Writing desk, there we go, is a feather and a glass bottle with a bit of plank. And there's also a back to it. I think the back is purely optional. I think the back is purely optional, but it looks nice with a back on, so I'm using a back. Depends where you're putting it. You might put it against the walls, you put a back on it, or you might put it in the middle of the floor when you don't put a back on it. It's entirely up to you. Uh, but that's writing desk is very useful storing pages. Now, uh, these pages we've got in here are stored in this notebook. If I take the notebook out, you'll see that there's no pages in it. Yeah? There's the stored pages all in there. Uh, and I do have more, but they're duplicates of what's here. Uh, I've got a duplication here of some bits and pieces. And what we want to do is we want to make copies of the pages to put into our new book. So we take some paper and we put it into this slot up here. And this slot up here, and I also need some ink in there. Ah, I forgot about that bit of ink in there. But it does mean I got two pages worth. Ah, oh, there's my spare ones. Look, page of ravines. Let's do that. I will make more ink up when we need it. Oh, that's a new feature I've only just noticed as well. Paper in there. I hadn't noticed there was paper in there before. Now there's no paper. And you put paper in there. I think that's a new feature. I don't remember ever seeing that before. And I've played with Mistcraft quite a bit. I wouldn't say I'm an expert at it, but I've messed with Mistcraft quite a bit. Right, so, here we go. Now, to make the perfect or a stable Mistcraft age, you have to have several factors as part of your age. So, let me work it out down here first, right? I'm probably just going to choose a random age, but I want to show you just what we would be stuck with if we don't find the right pages. So, first of all, <clears throat> you choose your biomes well actually no first of all you put a linking panel so you can travel there then you put your biome types right now there's also a biome controller which is the the third thing that you'd put in so let's have a look at our if we've got a biome controller because we've got plenty of biomes biome controller large biomes okay and single biome okay sky biome think those will probably be the biome controllers all right now i don't want large biomes because i want to be exploring so a single biome right so we'll put that in our second slot there so we put the front page and then we've got the first slot is the biome type that we want the second slot is the biome controller and a single biome means it only needs one biome in the front if i had large biomes it would take two and if I had, I think it's huge biomes, it would take three biome types. And there's also things like checkerboard biomes and all that sort of stuff. There's plenty of different modifiers. But we're just going to go for a single biome type in this, right? Uh, we get rid of sky. I think that's like uh, the end. The end as a biome, yeah? So biome types, we've got birch forest. We've got dark forest. We've got Dark Forest Center. We've got Deep Lakes, which is a feature, I believe. Dungeons, which is also a feature. And I might just pop Dungeons in. Let's do features down here, actually. Uh, Eastern Direction, Extreme Hills, Frozen River, Ice Block, Large Biomes, uh, Ravines, Netherrack, Netherrack. Well, I've got two Netherracks. I've got two Netherrack blocks. Let's get rid of that one. Uh, Mesa Plateau. So let's say we wanted a Mesa Biome. Okay, so we've got a linking panel to get there. Mesa biome is the very first 
thing or th up to three biomes, so up to three biomes. Single biome means you only need one. Biome controller is next. Then we need a sun modifier, a modifier for the sun. And I don't believe we've got a sun modifier. We could go east direction sun, but we haven't got an actual sun. So in theory, that would be something that we need to find. We also need a moon. And we haven't got a moon page, so we'll have to find that. We're also going to need star field, or the stars types. So we're going to need that. Without those, that's causing three elements of destabilization in the uh, world that we're going to be going to. Next we choose features, so let's choose dungeons, so there'll be dungeons in this world. And then we would choose a lighting. I don't think I've got a lighting, I didn't see one did I? No. I didn't see a lighting, no. So that would be another one that we're missing. And each one of these that we're missing would cause that destabilization, which could be poisonous rain and horrible corrosion and lightning strikes and always dark so the mobs are hostile all the time those sort of things so it's bad 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 uh terrain modifiers i think that might be i think that might be like some type of things like i guess the netherrack block would be a terrain modifier and then you would have weather and the types of weather as the final final piece okay so Aside from the linking panel, we go with a biome type, or the biome types, up to three. The biome controller, which tells them how to set out the biome types. So we had these three biomes, it was set out in this style. Then we've got the sun, the moon, and the stars, how they're going to behave. And we've then got a feature, a dungeons and villages. And then we've got lighting, and terrain, and finally weather, with the linking panel on the front. So as you can see, we're missing five, five types of page that we need to make a good age. So now we're going to... Wait, speedy. Uh, now we're going to our book binder. We would throw our linking page in first, then the biome, then the controller, which is good so far. This means it's a perfectly stable age so far, but all of the missing ones currently mean that its instability goes up. Uh, we're going to add sun, moon, stars, then features, then lighting and terrain. We're going to throw nether rack in the terrain type and then weather. We're missing all of this. So this is like uh, explorer, uh, ex explorer. Wow, my spelling today. Explorer 1. Explorer 1. Descriptive book. There we go. Right, now... Let's take this descriptive book off here, this age 13, which was very, very bad, really. And let's just dump age 13 in there for now. And if we select it, we'll see that it's only got a linking panel. That's all I put in it, nothing else. Just put in it and then gathered a few pages and stuff ready. Yeah. Uh, can I put linking panels in there? Yes, I can. Okay. So that's all stored away and we're ready to go into this age. I've got a bit of food on me, I've got my cool armor, which for some reason has taken some damage. And I don't know why. Hmm, okay. I haven't taken any hits, I've just been flying around a little bit. Uh, I don't know, I'll have a word about that some other time. But we're going to go and generate this age. Now, as an age generates for the first time, it does get a little bit laggy, so I'm going to pause... And cut straight back in after the worlds had those first few seconds of generation. Uh, so this is the nether rack that we were talking about. Anyway, we've got the nether rack. Here's my entry point. It does actually look like I'm inside nether rack. So look at the map. Well, we've got plenty of ruins and stuff that we're looking for. But we're looking for particularly the uh, ruined temples of. So... Uh, yeah, I don't know what to make of that one exactly. Let's have a look. So, first off, anyway, let's make a note of our marker home. Okay, and this is EX1. Marker on there. Okay. So, that's my starting platform. Let's see if we can make it up to the surface. Uh, well, that's a good thing. We've got nether quartz in this age. Cool. It looks sounds dark out there, that's for sure. 
Let's go up and out. Actually, let's fly. Let's just fly straight up and out. Let's see. Is the whole world going to be made of netherrack? Am I in a netherrack world? Wow, this is quite deep. I was quite deep dressed. Oh, wow. Uh, that looks... That's a werewolf. There's a few werewolves. And the sky is very rainbowy. I've got a rainbow sky at night. And some wolves. Oh, get rid of you. And... You. I can now morph into you. Oh, and I can now morph into you. Awesome. Wow. Okay. Well, this world isn't loading up very well for me. Uh, huh. Well, there's, we can see that there's lots of cave systems around, but nothing really special in the cave systems. No lava. That's a good thing, isn't it? I can see no lava down there. And I can see my platform spawned down there. That's cool. All right, so... Cave in for quartz should be okay around there. It is currently night time. I've got a beautiful rainbow in this world, though. I don't know how I can recreate that, to be honest. The terrain will load in. Let me just uh, take care of business over here. And then let the terrain load in a second. Let's see if we can make it day as well. I brought a bed just in case we can make it day. Uh, let's hope this doesn't blow up like the netherrack. Can't rest because monsters nearby. Okay. Uh, hang on, let's load these chunks back in. Alrighty. Well, can't make it day in here. Uh, but I have got the chunks loaded now. That is awesome, though. That's one of the things you can put into Miscraft. You can actually put a page where you get a rainbow. And I think I want to find one. Because the world that I'm going to be making is going to need something cool feature like that. Look at this. I'm actually at cloud level. This is cloud level, this is. Wow. Wow. Right, there's plenty of ruins around. I've got a few cool things that I can dig up. I've got lots of bad guys. I've even got little elephants and stuff around. Snakes and all that uh, mo creature stuff is spawning. And we've got all of the ruins from the ruins mod. That's spawning around the place. Uh, we've got all sorts of places. That's cool. They're little myths. What I'm looking for, though, are the Mistcraft dungeons themselves. Okay. And you know one when you see one. If there are any, that is. I guess the dungeons thing might have made it so that these guys have all the ruins spawning all over the place. A no, quick run over this way. Let's have a run around. Normally, if you head in one direction for long enough, you'd spot one. There it is. Look. Yeah. Right. This is what we're looking for. In the first and every other Miscraft age, until you've got the pages you want, you find these structures. And it looks exactly the same every time. It's the same structure every time. And you do things in the same way every time. So is that the sun coming up? Yeah, that's the sun coming up. That's good. All right. So inside here, there are cobwebs in the ceiling. Yeah. Loads and loads of bookcases. And these things called lecterns. And I quite like the lecterns. So I'm going to steal those lecterns. And on lecterns are these pages every now and again. So what have we got? Thornland's biome page. Which is a good one to get. So we'll have that. Thornland's biome page, and I'll get all the lecterns while I'm here. Uh, the other thing is, if you need books for your enchanting tables and stuff, well, there's a load of bookcases here you can get. I think I've got uh, Silk Touch on the pick, so I could Silk Touch them if I really wanted. And in the corners, either this corner here or this corner over here, there's always a loot chest as well, like that one. So we're going to quickly whack these out. There we go, smack them to bits. Get into the here and have a look at what we've got here. So... This is how they come these days. They come in almost stacks. Ooh, a twinkling stars. That's cool. Fine. That means we've got a stars. Mesa biome. A river biome. Dark moon. Ocean biome. No weather. That's a good one as well. Large biomes again. Um, I might just take... Oh, I suppose I ought to take all of them for now. Okay. And then we'll have another rush around and explore and get loads of pages. So it was in this direction, away from spawn. I can also check all these chests and ruins and stuff, but I'm not really that fussed about checking them all right at this minute, because generally they just have this sort of bit of junk in them. They don't have a lot of really cool loot. If you're running out of stuff and you need to survive in these areas, then you come and get all this sort of stuff, but 
Uh, unless I see one that's got treasures in, I'm not going to be bothered with it. Let's see, uh, have another little run underneath this place. Another little run around underneath here. That's cool. Let's see if we can fly just above the crowds. It doesn't, really doesn't like me uh, flying, does it? It doesn't like loading in properly when I'm flying. Let's go down. I think I'm going to have a, another little run around and find some more pages. And then I'll be back at the base with a page of everything that we need, hopefully. And I'll start putting together some ages that may be a little bit more stable than this. And you can see what the uh, terrain biome type has changed it to. But it's fairly stable, as in it's not, it's not hostile weather and stuff like that, which can happen sometimes. Alright, so... Yeah, I'm just going to keep running around, find some more of those places. If there's any ruins that I like the look of, I'll quickly investigate them. And I'll be back in a bit. Alrighty, well this is worth noting. In this chest I found some notebooks. Uh, keep the fur, get rid of that. And notebooks sometimes will have actual uh, pages in already. Like this, look. Oh yeah. So a notebook in a chest also is a ton of options and modifiers and stuff already in there ready to go so ice mountains dirt block spruce block twilight lake twilight glacier normal lightning natural grass mushroom island twilight stream meteors cave world tendrils tendrils is a pretty good one amplified normal world oh cool Ex eternal rain and dungeons uh, we had Thornlands, we've got Enchanted Forest Biome, that's pretty cool. Large Biomes I've already got. Dark Moon, was that one in there as well? Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to now be able to have a bit more storage space because I could store these in. However, when you put four in, they all go into separate slots. So I only really need one copy of anything in these books. So, more running around, gathering up some more pages so that we can make the perfect ages for the plan. Alright, well I've kinda... kinda had enough of exploring this one for a bit. The cloud level makes it fairly difficult to find what I'm looking for. Uh, let's just check this last one and then head back home somewhere. And... here we go. Right, so what have we got here? Yeah, we've got... Savannah Plateau M. We've got Dense Ores. That's awesome. That's like one of the uh, super ones that you want to get. Uh, deep Ocean. Surface Lakes. And the lucky special prize is Yellow Color. Wait. Slow Weather. Meh. Tiger Hills and Tiger M. Okay, that's, that's nothing behind that. Alrighty, so let's let's do something about this place. Let's make this the way home. Now I did have in my ender chest the book home. Now these lecterns can also handle home locations, look. So I can click on there and I can use that as a location to be able to go back. Now before I go. I'm going to make a book location for here so that I can get back to this very spot and carry on exploring. There we go. So now I've got that. That will bring me back to this place. And I can go back home through the portal. Zip. So, we've got a biomes set now. So what did we have in here? We had this biome. We had that biome. Got surface lakes. We've got the tiger hills. Uh, got slow weather, yellow, tiger M, and ravines, and the dense ores. Wow, that's awesome. Dense ores just is what it says on the tin. Gives you best better ores. And uh, let's put that notebook in there. Actually, let's take that notebook out. This notebook can go in there. This notebook can be the first modifier. The first thing we need is biomes. Okay, so the first notebook going in there are biomes. So only biomes will go in this one. Okay, so if I've got any duplicates and stuff, I'll sort that out later. You middle uh, mouse click to put things in the right order, apparently. Don't know how that happened then. Missing gaps there. Birch forest missing. There we go. Anyway. 
And the next notebook is carrying that for me, which I'll take out again now. That's got a biome type. That says biome, sky biome. I think that just means the end. Single biome, that's the modifier I need in this one. Ravines, we're going to get rid of. Netherrack block, we get rid of. Mesa platform biome, that's got to go in the other one. I've got to have a bit of a sort out. Uh, and I've got all these pages to put away as well. So I'll have a bit of a sort out and a quick sleep. And uh, we'll be back in a moment. Alrighty, so we're getting there. Now I've got this prepared up book. I've had a good sort out of all of these and I've put them all into the right categories and sorted all this out and been all careful to get things in the right places. Uh, now the terrain type, I'm not sure if I've got this right, but I'm putting the blocks types in there. Um, maybe, uh, maybe that'll change, but when I did netherrack as a terrain type, all of the terrain changed to netherrack and it was just all netherrack instead of uh, a mess of biomes, so which changed the biome main type of terrain. So that might be something I need to change in the future. But if I get diamond ore blocks and I do a birch forest of diamond ore, that would be pretty extreme, wouldn't it? Uh, that's one of the things you can get. Uh, so now I've got this book and I'll show you what I've prepared. So we've got the linking panel for the front. But our categories are the biome type. I've gone for the enchanted forest biome gone for a single biome so it's all going to be just an enchanted forest biome uh, then I don't have a sun page yet I haven't found any sun page so I need to find one of those still normal moon twinkling stars and then we've gone for a feature of crystalline formations which is the crystals that you make the portals out of so having those there will be cool uh, normal lighting uh, no terrain. I've not put a terrain modifier in because I don't want to overwrite the natural enchanted forest terrain. And no weather. So let's give that a shot, shall we? So for a start off, let's take the linking panel out. And if we put the linking panel in first, that starts us off with a descriptive book, right? Now if I place the notebook in there, it should put it all in in the order that I had it so enchanted forest single biome normal moon twinkling stars crystalline formations normal lighting and no weather and that is going to be the enchanted forest one so we're going to call that enchanted forest doink and I'm going to place that over here and we're going to have a little looky so I'll pause load in the world and be right back and so, here we are. I've got my little book to get back. I've set a waypoint on my map for home, but this is a twilight forest biome called the Enchanted Forest. And the cool feature about the Enchanted Forest is the way that the leaves are all changing colours around the place. This is an awesome biome. And there's these little things as well, fiddleheads. Which, I actually wanted some fiddleheads. I believe they sort of... Uh, change colour slightly as well as you go around um, but also we've got these special tendrils so I've got these blocks which I can now mine up and take home with me to make actual portal frames everywhere yep that's the way it goes so I can collect those up as well uh, there's a lot of things that I can gather from this place uh, wow funny looking sky I didn't choose um, a sun, so maybe that's messing the sky colour up, let's see. Uh, so anyway, I can wander about around here, I can gather up some bits and pieces, uh, my favourite tree wood types, and I've got Britannia flowers available to me as well, and there's all sorts of crazy stuff. I believe there's even supposed to be... Um, some Thorncraft nodes in this sort of place as well which sounds pretty cool we've also got these great big trees as well and these little things as well these from the twilight forest these uh, what are they called uh, chicada and also yeah they make a nice little noise and also these fireflies so they make a little little noise all the time and they give off light sources and they look pretty cool. We've also got the variety of animals in this forest from the Twilight Forest. Um, don't know why that stuff dropped. 
raw venison, awesome. Um, but the other great reason of being in the Twilight Forest here is there's uh, no hostile mobs spawning. No mo hostile mobs whatsoever. Oh dear, has that got a hat on? That's a boar with a hat on. <laughs> looks like somebody's riding the pig. <laughs> Who is that? I don't know, but he looks like he's riding the wild boar. That's cool. Uh, so, yeah, this is not the final version of what I want. This is just a place to quickly run around and grab resources like the first one. This is just me making ready for future areas that I want to develop and create. Uh, and I get a little bit of lag with this biome type as well, probably because of all the different changes in uh, ter terrain, as it were. But anyway, enough waffling about this episode. This episode is now over. Thank you very much for watching. I am going to do my uh, familiar outro. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you very soon. I'll do a little more exploring around this place. Gather a few more pages for New Ages. And uh, I will see you in the very next episode on Utopia Cubed. The Age of Adventure. A Druid's Tale. Uh, one last thing before I go, please check out the network site, um, YouTube channel below. The link will be in the description as always. Please check it out because there will be a video announcement there very soon. Thank you for watching. See you next episode.